Hi, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing what you guys seem to like more than anything, which is talk about a bad poem. And no one can get mad at me about it because this poet is long dead. So we're not hurting anybody's feelings, we're just having fun, and we're learning. You know, you can learn a lot about writing through bad writing. The poem we're going to be talking about today is called The Tay Bridge Disaster by William McGonagall. It is sometimes called the worst poem ever written. But I will give you a chance to form your own opinion first. I'm just going to read the poem in full. Tay Bridge Disaster. Beautiful railway bridge of the Silvery Tay, alas, I am very sorry to say that 90 lives have been taken away on the last Sabbath day of 1879, which will be remembered for a very long time. "'Twas about seven o'clock at night, and the wind it blew with all its might, and the rain came pouring down, and the dark clouds seemed to frown, and the demon of the air seemed to say, "'I'll blow down the Bridge of Tay.'" When the train left Edinburgh, the passengers' hearts were light and felt no sorrow, but Boreas blew a terrific gale, which made their hearts for to quail, and many of the passengers with fear did say, "'I hope God will send us safe across the Bridge of Tay.'" But when the train came near to Warmit Bay, Boreas he did loud and angry bray, and shook the central girders of the Bridge of Tay on the last Sabbath day of 1879, which will be remembered for a very long time. So the train sped on with all its might, and Bonnie Dundee soon hove in sight, and the passengers' hearts felt light, thinking they would enjoy themselves on the new year, with their friends at home they loved most dear, and wished them all a happy new year. So the train moved slowly along the Bridge of Tay, until it was about midway. Then the central girders with a crash gave way, and down went the train and the passengers into the Tay. The storm fiend did loudly bray, because ninety lives had been taken away on the last Sabbath day of 1879, which will be remembered for a very long time. As soon as the catastrophe came to be known, the alarm from mouth to mouth was blown, and the cry rang out all over the town, Good heavens, the Tay Bridge is blown down! and a passenger train from Edinburgh, which filled all the people hearts with sorrow, and made them for to turn pale, because none of the passengers were saved to tell the tale how the disaster happened on the last Sabbath day of 1879, which will be remembered for a very long time. It must have been an awful sight to witness in the dusky moonlight, while the storm fiend did laugh and angry did bray along the railway bridge of the Silvery Tay. Oh, ill-fated bridge of the Silvery Tay! I must now conclude my lay, by telling the world fearlessly, without the least dismay, that your central girders would not have given way, at least many sensible men do say, had they been supported on each side with buttresses, at least many sensible men confesses, for the stronger we our houses do build, the less chance we have of being killed." <laughs> so what exactly is wrong with this poem? Why is it considered the worst poem ever written? One. There are no moving, meaningful, specific, sensory details. There's no original, interesting language. There's not really any sound effects besides rhyme. And to me, the details included sound like what you would put in a newspaper article, not so much in a poem. Two, the rhythm is all over the place. And three, the tone doesn't really match the subject matter. So take the first stanza, for example. Beautiful railway bridge of the Silvery Tay. Alas, I'm very sorry to say that 90 lives have been taken away. Sorry to say feels like such an understatement to me. Like, I feel like that's what you would say if someone like came into the break room and you just ran out of cake. Well, I'm sorry to say there's no cake left. Not like, I'm sorry to say that 90 people died today in a tragic accident. <laughs> so the other part that I think is really bad, like I mentioned, is the meter, the rhythm here. Like clearly he's trying to go for some kind of consistent rhyme scheme, but it's just really all over the place. Like, again, in that first stanza, Alas, I am very sorry to say that 90 lives have been taken away on the last Sabbath day of 1979, <laughs> which we remembered for a very long time. <laughs> like, the length of the, the individual lines is just very all over the place, and the syllables that are emphasized, like, seem to be forming a pattern, and then the pattern gets, like, taken off the rails. It's just... It's very jarring. It just feels so silly and it feels like it doesn't, again, match the subject matter. Of course, there are countless metered rhyming poems that tackle sad subject matter, so I thought we could use an example of what a good rhythm sounds like and a good sad rhyming poem sounds like. So I'm going to take a moment now to read Funeral Blues by W. H. Auden so we can remember again what, what rhythm is supposed to sound like. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. 
Let airplanes circle, moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Put crepe bows round the white necks of the public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. So it's not perfectly metered, which it doesn't need to be, but the rhythm is actually even from line to line. There are similar patterns of stressed and unstressed syllables. So of course it's not the rhyming per se that ruins the tone of the Tay Bridge disaster. I think it's mostly due to the rhythm being so janky and all over the place. And also that the words chosen just feel very casual and not in line with the scale of the tragedy. I mean, let's take the ending, for example. I must now conclude my lay by telling the world fearlessly, without the least dismay, that your central girders would not have given way, at least many sensible men do say, had they been supported on each side with buttresses. <laughs> at least many sensible men confesses, for the stronger we our houses do build, the less chance we have of being killed. Had they been supported on each side with buttresses is, I think, the funniest line of this poem. Like, is it really necessary to get into the specific engineering reasons why the bridge failed? It's a poem, it's not a report, it's not a newspaper article. I would think you would want to focus on some details of the lives that were lost and the emotions of the people left behind. It's also worth noting that the last lines of any poem should be really strong. They should probably be among the strongest or be the strongest lines in your entire poem. And the last lines of this poem are for the stronger we our houses do build, the less chance we have of being killed. Like, this is the central point of the poem, which makes me wonder, and, you know, it's worth asking yourself as a writer, like, who is your audience? Like, you're writing a poem, who is it for? It doesn't have to be too specific, but, like, generally speaking, who would you imagine reading this poem? And if the point of this poem is that we should try harder to build our structures soundly, then I guess the audience of the poem is contractors and engineers. And I know that lots of poets used to frequently invert their syntax in order to land on a rhyme. I mean, lots of Shakespeare does it. I understand that. But there's something so funny to me about the inversion for the stronger we are houses do build. <laughs> as opposed to for the stronger we do build our houses. Like there's a way to invert syntax and move around words that sounds like smooth and interesting and not so jarring and strange. I just feel like this is a far cry from what light through yonder window breaks or any other examples of it being done well. And the poem ends on the word killed, which is like so on the nose and so much of the diction in this poem is just so on the nose. Like it uses the words frown, sorrow, angry, catastrophe, cry, disaster, awful, dismay, and killed. Frown particularly feels like an understatement and also like it just doesn't matter how many synonyms you can come up with for words to convey tragedy. Like, it would be better to give us some specific details and maybe say things in a way that's indirect. You no, know, it would be better to put us in the mind state of a person who's mourning, like, like the Auden poem does. And the Auden poem uses specific details to convey that mind state somewhat indirectly, right? Like, stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. He doesn't say, I'm mourning and would like the world to stop. Instead, he uses specific examples of the noise and the activity that he would like to cease. Like anyone who has grieved has felt that experience of feeling like the world has stopped and yet people continue and it feels wrong. It feels like your world has ended, so theirs should too. But he finds a way to say that that is interesting, that is specific, and that is, again, less direct than the Tay Bridge disaster. Also, nothing now can ever come to any good, which is a fantastic final line. It's so honest, but again, it's not as direct. He doesn't use the pronoun I. He doesn't say, I'm never going to feel good again, which would feel a little kind of self-centered and dramatic. Instead, he makes the more general statement that nothing can ever come to any good. And that line is effective as a place to end because he's already put in the work of demonstrating that this person was his entire world by saying, in an interesting way, he was my north, my south, my east, my west, my working week, and my Sunday rest, which again is specific and interesting. He doesn't just say, he was my everything, you know? So saying things clearly yet 
indirectly with specific detail just goes a, a really long way in poetry and in writing in general. So is this the worst poem ever written? Is the Tay Bridge disaster the worst poem ever written? Well, that's kind of a ridiculous question. Uh, I think that's a ridiculous title to give to any particular poem. Just like it would be somewhat ridiculous, but interesting to ask, what is the best poem ever written? There is no best poem ever written, and there is no worst poem ever written, but this is a pretty bad one. <laughs> and again, we can say that because the man is dead. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I would appreciate if you could like this video. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new to this channel, hi, I have a Patreon if you'd like more content. I also do manuscript consulting for poets, and I have a brand new poetry chapbook coming out on September 25th, 2022. So if it is past that date, Please look in the description for a link. I really appreciate it. Thanks.